Today we will be looking at Revell's Special Edition 1932 Ford 5 Window Coupe 2-in-1. So now without further ado, Daddy-O, let's go down to the bench and lift the lid on this amazing model kit. Revell's Special Edition 1932 Ford 5 Window Coupe 2-in-1 is a skill level 5 model kit for ages 13 and up in 125th scale. You can build this model in one of two ways as a fendered sports coupe or as the hot rod. On this side of the box you can see the wonderful 50s era hot rod we've got here with the big Chrysler motor as well as the more modern street rod with the current Ford engine in there. We also have your choice of three different wheel types. Here's the front three quarters of the hot rod and the rear three quarters as well as a Ford fuel injected engine from Mustang there and here's the back of the fender coupe. On the other side of the box we have the length of the model measuring at 6.625 inches. The number of parts is 191 molded in white with water slide decals and we also get all the features of the kit which I will include in the description down below and over here we get all the paint color callouts. I like to start these videos off by showing the instruction sheet first that way we both know how this kit will go together and what to expect. So here we have a nice three-quarter black and white photograph of the hot rod version of the car as well as a bit of a description here in English, French and Spanish. Assembly step number one shows the engine for the high boy. This would be the fenderless hot rod of course. So here we have a right and left hand side engine block with the transmission molded in place. Once you get that together you have a separate oil pan gluing up from underneath. You have your cylinder heads right and left as well as the valve covers up there. You've got the galley cover and then you've got your intake manifold. Down below we have our oil filter being glued onto our engine block as well as the exhaust manifolds being glued onto the gasket from the previous step. The alternative engine is designed for the coupe and that would be the yellow car with the fenders. So here we have a Ford engine block. We have both right and left hand sides as well as the transmission molded in place. Then you get the oil pan being glued up underneath as well as the transmission pan. Right and left hand side cylinder heads and valve covers. You also have a choice of the chrome valve covers which you could put on. And there is a breather cap going on to here. You also get a choice of which kind of intake setup you want. If you want the fuel injected 5 liter intake from the 90s you can add that on as well as a distributor cap up here on the special manifold. Or if you want the carbureted version from maybe the 70s, you have this intake here, as well as a two-piece carburetor and a chrome air cleaner with a paper filter, as well as your distributor being glued up front. Now down here we have our oil filter being glued in place, our alternator, our serpentine brackets up here, or belts and pulleys, I mean. And then our water pump, which glues on the front, as well as a power steering pump, possibly. And then here we have our starter motor being glued onto our engine block. Steps three and four show the wheel assembly, as well as the front and rear axle assembly for our little car. So here we have the coupe. You're going to build these wheels two times, one in the front, one in the back. What it looks like is a Krager 5 star mag going into the tire with the wheel back here for the front. That would be the small tire. And then in the back we have the same setup only you're going to use the large rear tire. Now down here for the high boy you have the front wheels. You got your wheel back, the small tire, the stock style steel wheel, the chrome beauty ring as well as the hubcap. This would be from a later model Ford like a 1940 or even 53 and these would all attach in and give you that nice vintage style of wheel. Once you get the high boy front wheels built up you're going to build the front dropped axle with our disc brakes on here and then you can pop your wheels into place. For the rear we have the wheel back, the large tire and the factory steel wheel as well as that beauty ring and hubcap and then to attach to your axle down below you also have these discs which go into the rear axle here and you have the differential cover coming in the back and then those wheels would snap onto here. These are the little point systems so make sure that you have seam lines removed so that the wheel will rotate freely before you snap this in place and lock that wheel on there permanently forever. 
Step 5 shows our chassis assembly and first off you want to take your exhaust system and paint it all up, make it nice and pretty, and then glue it onto the painted chassis. And then you want to add in your cross member for your engine mounting. But before you do that, you've got your two-piece master cylinder here for your brakes, which points in the opposite direction. But that's what they had to do for the hot rods in order to make all this work. Step six shows our suspension assembly for the model kit. So here we have the front suspension and you're adding in your shock absorbers. These mount onto the frame right in here. You also have this nice steering box with the steering column. And then in the back, you got your rear axle and these big shocks which glue down into here. In step seven, you get your choice of the high boy radius rods, which seem to be longer or the coupe radius rods, which seem to be shorter. There's also the tie rods and all of that, which glue in here. There is a front brace, which goes between those frame horns right up front. And then in the back, you also get your supports and another bar in for the rear. There's a lot of options in panel eight for attaching our engine of choice into our chassis. So here we have the Chrysler engine going in first, or you could also use the Ford Coupe engine. And you got your drive shaft being glued onto the end of the transmission and into the differential. There's also the upper portion of the fuel tank with the filler right there, the filler cap. Now, if you're doing the coupe, you want to add on your exhaust manifolds, which drape over the side of the frame rails. Otherwise, for the high bore, you're using the ones that were in the previous step and just adding it in, in our engine build step. Panel 9 shows the assembly of the interior. Now, you get your choice between the high boy, which is a standard with the clutch pedal, or the coupe, which would only have one for the automatic. You also get these nice interior pleated sides, which go in, and the tuck and roll seat, which also goes in. And then you've got your shifter lever here, which looks like a piston head and drops into place in a little hole down there. You get your choice of dashboard for this model kit, and what is really cool is you get a nice 1940 Ford style dashboard for the high boy, which was a very popular hot rodding trick to do back in the day. The instruments are decals, either 17, 18, or 19, which we'll see at the end of the video. And then once the decals are installed, you can add on this clear plate just to protect it and make them look like they're behind glass. For the coupe, we get the dashboard, which would have come out of the Ford factory back in the 30s. And here's the instruments here with more decals to install. It should all look good. And your dashboard of your choice drops in right here into the slots for your interior. Panel 10 gives you your choice between either the high boy or the coupe steering wheel and steering column. Now for the high boy, you get the original 1940 Ford style steering wheel and you would remove this lever here, which is your column shift and you have your turn signals. So this would all get glued down together or you can build the coupe and leave on the shift lever. That's for your automatic select. And then you get the cool looking steering wheel, which you glue onto the top of the steering column. Your steering column would then weave in through the hole in your dashboard of choice and attach at the bottom right here on the floorboards with just a little bit of glue here and there. What I would do is put this through the hole first and then add the glue on with uh, the steering column moved back a bit and then push it into place. Always remember to scrape the paint off the contact surfaces so that you get that plastic to plastic adhesion. Now on to our actual body, and panel 11 shows you how to build up your glass out of the three pieces. Rear view mirror, the glass, and the frame, and then that links up in from behind and pushes through there. Then we get our nice rear side windows, as well as the rear window in the back. Next up, we install our firewall to our body shell, and here it says, note, interior side of firewall is shown, and you are supposed to paint this, so you would paint it and then turn it around and install it onto your car. This should be sunken in here in the front, and then the body itself will push down in the front and swing into the back of the interior. Now, because the high boy does not include the fenders, we need to blank off these wheel arches. And in order to do that, we have these two pieces, which we'll glue into here. 
Then down below we get our radiator and our radiator shroud and we glue those two together and drop them onto the front of the chassis and then glue our body right down just behind the engine. If you want to build the coop, what you're going to do is use your shell and then the radiator back, glue them together and add on the electric fan which you glue onto the other side of the radiator. The difference between the coupe and the high boy, of course, is our original 1932 Ford Fenders, which is the first step in this assembly. So you want to add the fenders onto the top of the chassis and then glue on your bumper brackets and the front bumper. You can also add in these rear covers here, which will glue on the end of the frame at the back. And these are your bumper brackets, which go into these holes here. And then your bumper would attach onto the back. Next up, you want to take your radiator shroud completed from the first step and glue it right here on the frame and then drop your body into place. These open arches are going to go on the tops of the fenders here, so that would help you align it all up. Step 14 shows our radiator assembly from the back. Now what we have here is our radiator cap being glued onto the top of the shroud and then here we have the upper radiator hose and the lower one. These ones look to be from the chrome parts tree as the numbers are higher. And then on the coupe, we have the regular parts tree upper and lower radiator hoses, which would be painted flat black. And then your radiator cap going on the top. Panel 15 shows the three options you have in building your hood for your coupe. And what we have here are the different side panels for the hood. Here we have the multi louvered deal, which was pretty popular in the 50s. We also have the slab sided style, which would be a little more modern. And then we have the original 1932 style long tall louvers. And it's your choice which one you want to build. It says, note, as in full size hot rod building, hood sides may have to be fitted to grill shell, hood top and body. Next up, you get your choice of which grill insert you want to use, either the smoothed out high boy one or the ventilated coupe style, which would have been the original 1932 Ford style. That would glue right into your shell here. And you also get this nice bracket going from the grill shell to the top of the firewall. And then here you get your hood and drop it on. Now this little piece is for the coupe only. It attaches the two fenders together at the front. Panel 16 gives you a choice of which types of headlights you want to use, either the ones for the high boy, which just mount onto the top of the shock towers, or the one for the coupe, which mounts onto the fenders using the original 1932 Ford light mounting bracket. Panel 17 shows the coupe rear end assembly. Here you have the trunk lid with the multiple louvers being glued into place, or you could even hinge it at the top and have an opening. You also get your rear tail lights with the bezels and the red transparent lenses and the license plate being glued into here. Now you also have the option of using these tail lights, which are more vertical instead of horizontal. And then your rear license plate would glue into the same spot. For our high boy build, you get this really cool gas tank. This has the right and left hand side with the cap on the top, as well as the two end pieces. And this will go onto the front of the car, as we'll see in a moment. Out back, you actually have a smooth trunk lid. You could use this on the coupe as well, if you really wanted to, and switch out for the louvers on the high boy. And then here you've got the Pontiac style rear circular lights from maybe a 54 Pontiac, I think, which would glue onto the bottom, as well as the license plate gluing in into the back. And here we have the final installations on the high boy. These are the 32 Ford style door handles, which will glue into those holes. And then here we have the Nerf bars, which would glue into the frame at the front. And there's that fuel tank being dropped right in there and mounting on that bar. You could also use these door handles on the coupe if you wish and make it all nice and cool. Panel 19 shows your decal applications for your 1970s style coupe. And what we have here is the license plate decal being glued up on the front bumper there. You also get these wonderful flames which are all over the car and the rear license plate going to the shroud at the back. If you desire to mix and match parts and build the coupe more as a 1950s style in maybe primer black, here we have those nice stock style wheels. We also have the Nerf bars being glued into the front and you get the wonderful pinstripes that you can add on all over the car and the license plate out in the back. 
Next, we get into the decal application for our high boy. And what you would want to do in the building step is to paint the firewall with white paint, and then it would match the white off the decal sheet here. We get the nice flames with the white border, and these little flames are tight enough to fit on the top of the cowl, as well as drop down the side and look pretty nice. Here we have all the different type of sponsor decals in the side window, as well as a pinstripe here and our license plates front and rear. And for our final application, we have the devil's head here being mounted right up into that radiator shroud. That's why you'd use a smooth one in there. And then down here we have our deuces license plate, as well as the flames going up here. These are a different kind of flames from the previous ones. We also have the racing number in the side, as well as what type of drag racing class this thing would be. You can also use your steel wheels here with the white walls and the white walls are a separate decal as well. And then there's flames going up on the top, on the top of the radiator grill, as well as onto the hood, and the license plate in the back. Next up, we have our body shell, and this is really quite cool because here you have the open trunk area, and there is a sill around the trunk that goes the entire distance, and that is so that the trunk doesn't fall through. You could add some very tiny hinges up here if you're really good at that sort of thing. Underneath there are some mold marks going on in here now that I have this flipped over. Let's just turn it back for a minute. You can see the wonderful hinges on the fronts of the doors. The little cowl vent here which would open up from the inside on the lever on the dashboard. We also have a texture in the roof which is quite accurate to the car. There is a seam line that comes up here and then goes out to that window and up along here which will need to be sanded out. But overall I think this is quite a nice little simple body and a good representation of the 32 Ford High Boy. On this parts tree we have the fenders for the coupe and there's our running boards right there with a nice rubber texture. We also have the 32 Ford style dashboard right there the top of our fuel cell and it looks like maybe the smooth sides of the hood it is the smooth sides of the hood okay so there's that option there take a look at the wonderful dashboard very simplistic but really nice looking the fenders do have that texture in there as well as the mounting holes for that headlight bracket and it even has these side panels which would fill up the holes in the body now underneath there are a few mold marks going on in here, so that number 11 hobby blade and even some sandpaper will remove them. You might want to take those off right here beside that open hole so that when you glue your instrument panel down, it's nice and flush. You do have the mold marks in behind on the smooth hood, so again those would have to be sanded. But overall, it looks really nice, not a lot of flash going on, and should be good in your model. On this parts tree we get the chassis right here with the fuel cell molded in place. We also get that front cross member which goes on the fenders of the coupe. Then here we have our radiator. We've got our Ford engine block and transmission, the oil pan, the cylinder heads, the upper radiator hose. We have our firewall here, the cross brace, the lower radiator hose, our shocks, our radiator grill shell. And then we have the hood, and I think this is another part of that fuel tank. Actually, it is. So, again, look at the nice detail on that engine. That's got the long five-speed transmission on there. Very nicely done. There's the other side of our radiator with the sunken in portion. That is so that the engines will all fit into place. Then we've got our grill shell with the Ford emblem right there. And our tank. Look at the nice coils into those rear shocks. Again, on the radiator, we actually have the proper texture and the mounting bars for that electric fan. There is a trademark on here, the copyright, 1996 this came out. And then there we've got the printing from the factory in Zongshan, made in China. Now take a look underneath here. Again, there is a copyright mark right there, so that number Number 16 hobby blade, use it very tightly in there to get rid of that, unless you want to leave it in. There's our nice floorboards there. Again, really wonderful looking model, and with a bit of cleanup, it should look even better. Our next parts tree includes the wheel backs for those nice mag wheels for the coupe, 
And then here we get those frame rails in the back, as well as our bumper mounting brackets. There's one of the intake manifolds and a little teeny piece right there, actually. And then we also have our hood. Now, what hood is this? Let's turn it over and we can see that's the actual 1932 a long louvered hood. Now off the back here again there might be some mold marks in place so you'll need to get rid of those but flipping this back over again you can see the wonderful detail in this model kit. Truly again another really good one from Ravel. This parts tree includes a lot of different components. Here we have our rear axle and this actually looks like a Ford 9 inch style rear axle. We also have our exhaust system and little pins and little different things. There's our short and a differential as well as the steering box, the differential back cover. Here we have our later style steering wheel as well as serpentine belts and pulleys. There's our fan here, starter motor, the two piece uh, brakes. That of course is our master cylinder is what I'm trying to say. Then we have our steering column here and we also looks like the front timing chain cover. Turning this over, yes it is. Again, we can see the wonderful detail in here. Look at the back of that electric fan. It's even got the casing. Again, really awesome type stuff. Should be really nice to paint up and a lot of fun to build. Our next parts tree includes a lot of the interior details. Here's the 1940 style steering wheel, as well as our floor pan and back panel. And then here we have the side panels with the nice door handles in place, as well as a blanked out radiator grill shell insert. So again, really nice work. There is a texture down here on the floor. Look at the nice 40 Ford steering wheel. You could use that in an AMT kit if you wanted to. And then there's our nice door panels. Again, the tuck and roll pleating is really cool, as are the window cranks and the door handle itself. Turning it over, there are sink marks underneath. I don't know if you need to worry about those ones so much. Just make sure they're nice and smooth here so when they attach to the floor or wherever they need to attach, they're not gonna cause a problem because the sink mark is sitting up or something and you can't figure out why this thing is sticking out by a sixteenth of an inch. So again, make sure you get this right and it will treat you right in return. Our next parts tree includes the factory steel wheels that look like they were lifted from a 1940 Ford. Again, really excellent stuff. There's our wheel backs for those. We also have the blank out panels if you want to build this without the fenders. Here we have the tuck and roll seat and the firewall down below. So let's bring this up into the camera. You can see the sunken in part on the firewall and the pleated back here, which you would be painting to match your interior. There are some mold marks again, which can be cleared up if you really need to, but because of their location, I'm sure they'd be hidden in the car. Now, looking at those wheels, they have the nice five bolt pattern, just like the real thing. And it does look like the hubcaps would just drop in there as well as a beauty ring around the outside. So again, if you're building it traditionally 1950s, these are the ones you wanna take. On this parts tree is the Chrysler engine block. This is really nice because you've got the really well done frost plugs in here. There's the 1944 dashboard as well as different hoses and we have our intake manifold, cylinder heads, belts and pulleys, front timing chain cover and the oil pan and our steering box. So bringing this up to the camera. Oh, there's also the crossover pipe which would be glued up into the front of the engine. So again, take a look at how nicely this is all detailed out. Not quite the most detailed of all the kits, a bit smooth and simple, but still gets the job done. There's that dashboard for the 40 Ford, which will drop into this 32. So turning it over, there are mold marks again, but overall quite a nice looking kit. I do believe this is the oil filter, but I'm not entirely sure. But that's okay, you can always match it up with the numbers in the instructions and build the kit. This parts tree has the different trunk lids on it. The first one being the smooth 1932 Ford style trunk lid, and the second being the one with all the louvers punched in. These little type of louvers were very popular back in the 50s and early 60s because they were quite easy to produce on a louver making machine. And then here we have the side curtains for the hood, which were also louvered to match the rear of the trunk. These two, in my opinion, should go together. I couldn't really see you using this and then the smooth sided hood sides. 
Uh, but that choice, of course, is yours. It's just my belief that these would look good together as a match set. But anyway, if you turn this over, you can see the sink marks in here. There isn't any like cross bracing under the hood or a mat or anything like that. So again, or the trunk lid, pardon me. So again, it's quite simplistic. But once you get it all sorted out, it will look quite good in your model. The Ravel 1932 Ford comes with a lot of chrome parts trees. There are three in this kit. So what we have here are these radius rods. We also have the engine chrome bits for both the Ford and the Chrysler block. There's an intake manifold. We've got the Chrysler valve covers. We also have the valley cover here. And then we've got the Ford valve covers. We have all the beauty rings and the hubcaps, as well as our air cleaner, the windshield frame. There's the Mustang fuel injected type throttle body. Here we have our gas tanks. We also have the carburetors and the Pontiac style rear taillights. There's the little Nerf bars and we have our exhaust manifolds and the little attachment points for our gaskets and the fuel cell and the gear shift lever. Again, really cool looking stuff. The detail on the chrome is quite nice. A little bit of a black wash or something in there will highlight everything. Again, look at that intake manifold there for the injected throttle body style. Really nice stuff on the back. Mold marks, I think. Got to get rid of them with that hobby blade. But overall, really nicely done. Our next chrome parts tree includes the valve covers for the stock style of Ford engine. We also have the two-piece carburetor and our chrome air cleaner here. A couple little tiny parts, I'm not sure what they are. Then here we have the radius rods. We also have the front steering with the uh, tie rod ends and all that sort of stuff. Your pitman arm, the whole deal. We got our little brace here for the front of the car or the rear as well as these shocks right there. There we've got our disc brakes. We also have the exhaust headers for the coupe. And then here we've got the grill shell and we have the transmission cover, the license plate shroud, the front radius rods and our front axle down here, as well as different caps and knockoffs and that sort of thing. These rods here as well. Again, really nicely done. Take a look at those disc brakes. Looks like the real thing, only smaller. That also needs a black wash in that grill, which should make it stand out. Again, on the back, you got your mold marks, so you're gonna have to sand these down in order to get that to fit in properly. But overall, it looks really nice, and the chrome is quite brilliant on this. Our final chrome parts tree includes the American racing style mag wheels. These could also be Kragers. I'm not quite sure who made what type of style of wheel, all I know is that the five spokes could be universal between the two different companies. Here we have the front brace for our headlights, and we have different sizes for either you, if you want the high boy or the coupe itself. We also have the rear bumpers for the coupe and the rear window chrome piece. Again, really excellent looking stuff. There's the instrument panel for our 32 Ford style dashboard. Really quite cool. Look at those wheels again. They even include the valve stem molded inside. So excellent stuff. On the back there are some mold marks. So again, you're gonna have to clean that up. But overall, this chrome looks quite nice indeed. Here we have the clear components. And what we have is the larger headlights or the smaller ones. We've got the little clear lens that goes on the dashboard for the 40 Ford style dashboard. We also have our front window and our rear side windows and the rear glass. Here we have the different style of taillights. You've got the teardrop vertical style and then you've also got the rectangular horizontal style. Again, really nice work. Let's just bring these up to the camera. Be careful with those little taillights because they're so tiny. There we also have the pattern in the headlights. Remember this goes north, south, east, and west, and not like at this weird angle of 45 degrees or something like that. That is if you wanna get your headlights to look accurate. Again, really nice detail. You can see that the windows are sunken in a bit around the edges, so that'll make them fit flush with the body and turn out really quite nicely. Again, these taillights are just basically flat, so I'm not going to bring those up to the camera, but you can see what they look like down here. 
Here we have the tires for our 32 Ford, and these are all attached in that spider web. So you're going to have to cut them off here, 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 and here, as well as the little outer tabs here, 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 and there. There are no side names on these tires, like Goodyear, Firestone, or any of that kind of stuff. There is the nice tread pattern going off the ends of the tire. And again, you can always clean these up using our tire spinning technique, which is scrolling across in this video here. But overall, these tires are nice. They're small and big in the back, which is just what you want for your street rod or your high boy. Here we have the decal sheet for our 32 Ford, and look at all these nice, wonderful, bright colors. What's really outstanding here are the different license plates. You get two from Illinois and you get two from California at different times in the history of automobiles as well. So here we've got a California plate from 1932. We also have an Illinois plate from 1940 and then a California plate from 1952 and a more modern recent Illinois plate. We have the numbers 1030907. 3X6511, 1W6941, and then DV Deuce. So really quite cool. There's the different instrument faces for that 1940 dashboard. You can add in the original decal, which would be your original instrument panel, I should say. Or you can add in these gauges, which would have been done more in the, I guess, modern age. There we have our white walls, the two bigger ones for the back and the skinnier ones for up front. Look at these wonderful traditional style flames. There's the devil head. I have seen this in earlier cars from that era. The 40s, I mean, early 50s even. We also have these instrument gauges which drop into the 32 Ford panel. The, these are the different types of window and drag racing club type stickers that are all out there. And then here we get two different sets of flames, the ones that transition from white to yellow with little red tips, or just yellow and red. And then look at all the different pinstripes, and there's your racing numbers for the dragster. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video where we got to see the 1932 Ford 5 Window Coupe Special Edition by Ravel. And if this model kit made you flip your lid and you really dig these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you want to support us for as little as $3 a month to help us make better videos, click that join button just underneath this video viewer. Now, if you want to check out our model kits, don't forget to visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca where you can see many models that are available now and ready to ship. So, also, don't forget to join our Monster Hobbies newsletter. I know I'm forgetting a little bit here at the end to say that. Join our newsletter, that's in the description down below, and you can save on all your models at monster-hobbies.ca. We send out this newsletter which shows what's coming up and the deals of the week. So until next time everybody, thanks for watching and happy model building. We will see you in the next video.